Andrew. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, how are you guys doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? All right, so um, I have about $1,500 in credit card debt. I'm cutting it down, not using that credit card anymore. Um, but my question is, I have $1,694 in interest-free credit card debt. It's interest-free for 33 more months. It's equipment for my music stuff. I'm a musician, and I do stuff like that. So I was just wondering, what should I attack first? Uh, what should I do with that interest-free debt? Should I just pay the payments till it's done or just pay it off? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, so you have 1600 in debt, and you have how much other debt? Uh, that's that's the only debt I have. You only have sixteen hundred dollars in debt. That's your all and your that, debt. That's that's in the interest free. Yeah. No, and I'm saying period. In, period. Oh, Any kind of debt. You have student loan, car debt, other credit cards. No student loans, no car debt. So I got a paid off car. So total with the interest free and the one with interest, I have about three thousand dollars in debt. Okay. All right. And and your household income is what? Uh, I make about sixteen hundred or sixteen thousand a year. Okay. With that, that's including music stuff and my part-time job as well. Oh, and I'm a full-time student, so. Oh, okay. There's that. Okay, because I was getting ready to say your job sucks. Okay. <laughs> All right. um, a full-time job making sixteen k puts you at the poverty level, so we don't want to call that right. a career right. track. Okay. Uh, so we need to. So what are you going to do? When are you getting out of school? What's your plan? I've got about two years left in school. I'm still at home, so I don't have any rent. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have I don't have a mortgage or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, um, what are you studying? I'm graduating uh, marketing. Good. Okay. So I want to go into sales. All right. So you're a college student that lives at home with three thousand dollars in debt, and how how is school paid for? My my father pays for that. Very nice. Okay. Are, are you running up? Are, are you buying music equipment? Are you playing shows on the weekend, trying to make it, or is it just a hobby? No, yeah. That, I mean, that yeah, was, sure. that's the dream. But I also want a backup plan because I don't want to, you know, go move up to Nashville and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, not make it and be stuck. Yeah. I'd be stuck at that point. So. Yeah. How do you get the next country music star's attention in Nashville? Uh, waiter. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's the, right. Uh. All right. Hey. Okay, number number one, you got a good overall plan. Uh, number two, if you're making sixteen hundred dollars or, or seventeen thousand dollars a year, you should pay this debt off with no way out of pocket expenses to mount anything very very quickly. Would you agree with me that you're going to be done with the entire amount of debt within three to six months? Is that doable? It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I would think so. Okay, and so really, the interest rate doesn't matter because you're going to be done in three to six months. Now, what we teach to answer your question technically, Andrew, is to list your debts smallest to largest. And uh, it sounds like they're about the same size. Regardless of interest rate, pay minimum payments on everything but your smallest debt. Attack the smallest debt first, regardless of interest rate. So the fact that it's a 0% interest does not impress me, does not change the order in which I pay it off. I would pay off the smallest one first, regardless of the interest rate, because I want you to have the emotional advantage of traction, seeing that you're starting to win. Rather than living off of these credit cards, you're putting them under your heel and grinding them and being done with them. And that's the big thing. But it sounds like these are very similar. I mean, if they're both sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars $1,700 each, then, then you got $3,000 total, then... You know, just uh, you can put whichever one you want first, but be done with the whole thing in six months. But let's just say you had ten different debts, and one of them was a thousand, and one of them was ten thousand. Uh, but the ten, the uh, the one thousand was interest free. Would I still put it first? Yes, I would, because I want you to get the traction, the advantage of this psychological income of winning. It's called hope, and it causes people to continue to move through this, and that's how. We at Ramsey have gotten more people out of debt than probably any other organization on the planet, at least currently operating. And Andrew, let me let me speak to you here. There is a Gibson Flying V electric guitar that I've been eyeballing for like six months. And I can afford it, but my wife and I have made some goals and some plans, and so I'm holding off, I'm holding off, and now Instagram listens to me and they just send me these pictures of the guitar and another one and another one. 
you're going to have to not buy music equipment for a season. Just stop. You think you need a new thing for this and a new – got to have this. You don't need it. There's no end to it. There's, it just will continue to consume you, and I'm in the middle of, <laughs> of that myself. A- any people that play music have an addictive problem yes. for their instruments. It, it, music people, car people, gun people, like it just happens. So you got to stop buying equipment and say, I'm not going to buy another thing, piece of gear for another year, and then I'm going to get out of debt. Wait, wait a minute. If I need another gun, that's different. That, that's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and don't get – leave the cars alone, right? Leave my cars alone. Man. Yeah. No, no. I it's you it's the same that. thing. You get, you, get, you get to where – and the truth is there's almost nothing in America that we buy that qualifies as a need. Very few. Almost everything we buy qualifies as a want. Very few. I mean, we, we pretty much are all overfed and have too many clothes. <laughs> And we pretty much all have a place to sleep. Yeah. So food, shelter, clothing, transportation, we got it covered. You know, I mean, it's not an issue. And so that that's not the problem in America. Now, there's nothing wrong with spending money on wants, but we just tell folks to be really careful and be ma- emotionally mature enough to say that is a want. Right. And wants, for sure, you pay cash for. And for sure, they've got to go in line with your overall goals. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so one of the issues that Rachel Cruz talks about a lot and I do too as well and we're talking about teaching kids about money is teaching them contentment to learn to sit in what you have and being good with it um, and you know the, how far you could go in the music business with the music equipment you already have is amazing yep That's right. and without ever buying another thing That's right. uh, it's amazing and uh, how, how you know, I, if I could just get that, if I could just get that, if that's a discontentment. Right. The advertisers and the marketers' job is to create psychological dissonance, discomfort in you so that you feel, I will be comfortable when, I'll be satiated when I get that next thing. And, and you know, that that's the driving force of the most marketed to, advertised to culture in the history of mankind. In the history of the human race, and you live right square in the middle of it, and, you, and so do I. We see four to eight thousand advertisements a day. Yep. There are advertisements in the bathroom, for God's <laughs> sakes, <laughs> on the front and the back of the door. They're everywhere. It's ridiculous. Yes. You know, and so it, it, you're not getting away from it. And so what you have to learn is the spiritual and emotional, psychological discipline to say no. No, I'm it's not a doing complete it. sentence. I'm not doing it.